Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another monthly meal prep. It has been a while since I've done a monthly meal prep and boy oh boy did we really need it. My freezer was empty and I usually love being able to go there to get quick meals and I just really needed to stock up on a few meals. So first things first, I made myself a great coffee just to get my energy level up and get raring to go. So I decided to make a spaghetti squash lasagna. I've wanted to try out this idea for a while and right now we've been a little bit on a spaghetti squash kick. It's just so delicious. If you've never tried a spaghetti squash, I highly, highly recommend it. Also, as usual, you will find either the link or the actual recipe below in the description box for all of the recipes that you see on this video. So the protein for this lasagna, I just used ground beef and I just kind of fried that up with some onions and then I used some mozzarella and some Parmesan for in the lasagna. Let me know in the comments what are your must haves for in lasagna. I haven't made a whole lot of lasagna to be honest, but I want to really get good at it because I really enjoy eating it at other people's houses whenever they make it. So I used my little oil dispenser, which I will link below. I've been getting requests for that link. Um, the, my little oil dispenser to oil down my freezer pans that I like to use. And then I gathered the different things to make my layers of my lasagna. So once the spaghetti squash came out of the oven, you wanna let them cool just a little bit, enough that you can touch them. These were still pretty hot yet. Yeah, you're gonna see me kind of like moving my hands around because I was trying to get all of the flesh out of the inside without touching them too much. So I pulled all of the little spaghetti strands out of the spaghetti squash and I got some red sauce. It doesn't really matter what kind you use. And I also got some cottage cheese and I started making my layers. So I did spaghetti squash, some of the ground beef, some cottage cheese, a little bit of red sauce, and then a little sprinkle of the shredded cheese, and then I kind of repeated the process. Whenever I was done, I realized I needed a little bit more cheese just to give that good bubbly, cheesy top once this is baked up. So I did shred up a bit more cheese just to top it all off. Also, I wanted to report that these inexpensive pans from Amazon have been working so well for the freezer. I just put a piece of press and seal between the pan and the lid and it freezes perfectly. I want to say a huge thank you to Kettle and Fire for sponsoring this week's video. I have been using Kettle and Fire products for years. Kettle and Fire started out as the first shelf stable nationally available bone broth in the US. They are focused on only using the highest quality ingredients starting with grass fed and finished beef bones and organic pasture raised chicken bones. I personally like to use the Kettle and Fire bone broths in my cooking, but they also make an excellent, warm, health-centered drink. They use slow simmer times, 14 plus hours to extract maximum ingredients, collagen, and amino acids. Kettle and Fire uses only the highest quality ingredients, and they only use organic veggies, herbs, and spices. Their bone broths give a great source of high quality collagen, which is something I like to get in almost every day if I can, and they have delicious chef developed recipes for amazing flavor. Before I show you how I use them in my cooking, I wanted to say they are also Whole30, Paleo, and Keto friendly. Something else I really love about the Kettle and Fire packaging is they are packaged in approximately two cup portions, which is really amazing for a lot of recipes. I tend to use around two cups, and today I'm going to be making a cauliflower wild rice soup, and it does call for two cups of bone broth. 
broth. I love the fact that the bone broth has already been made with some veggies so you've got that deep wonderful flavor that is going to add to the end result of this soup. In the bottom of the pan I put some butter, I put some onion and celery and I'm just going to let those kind of cook up. I'm also going to be adding some of my home canned carrots since those are already cooked since they were canned I'll be adding them a little bit later than the other veggies but I wanted to get them cut up so they're ready to go. Adding to the onion and celery I'm going to shake in some thyme, some black pepper and some salt. Once the veggies have softened you're going to add back in the cauliflower cream and bone broth mixture and there you have it a rice free cauliflower rice soup. So click on the link below and use code Adeline at checkout or go to kettleandfire.com slash Adeline for 20% off your order. That's kettleandfire.com slash Adeline or just click on the link below and use the code Adeline for 20% off of a variety pack today. To store this soup, I just put it into some jars and left a little bit of headroom at the top and threw them in the freezer. Next up, we are going to be making a ham and potato casserole. This is such a great comfort food, and it feels like a meal that took a lot more time than it really does to put together. So the first thing that I did is a step you may not need to do yourself, but I made up a chicken cream soup substitute. So a lot of times you buy the condensed cream soup in a can, but we are gluten-free in our house, so I used some gluten-free flour and I just kind of mixed up a great substitute for this. It's really not that difficult. It just basically has a little bit of gluten-free flour, some chicken bone broth or regular chicken broth, some spices, um, a little bit of half and half or cream, and you just cook it until it gets thick. So you're gonna see it turn from more of a liquid form to more of the consistency of like gravy, even a little bit thicker than gravy. So once I had my cream condensed soup made up, I pulled two quarts of canned potatoes. Now, you can obviously cook up your own potatoes. You do not need to use canned potatoes for this, but I have a lot of canned potatoes on my canning shelves, so I'm obviously using them for recipes like this. Then I got a nice big ham steak out of the freezer. I had that thawed out and diced it up in nice bite-sized pieces. I love ham steaks. They're so yummy and they have such a great meaty texture. You can cut this into whatever sizes you like. You could make them a lot smaller than this if you wanted to. And then you can either add in your can of creamed chicken soup if you just got some from the store or if you're going to make some yourself like I did, you're going to need about one and a half cups of the cream soup mixture that you made up. Next, you'll add in some sour cream and some cheddar cheese. Our sweet pup Zaylee had been walking around the kitchen just waiting for something to drop on the floor so I decided to give her a little piece of a treat. Again, I used my little oil dispenser to just grease down the bottom of one of my freezer pans. And I do get these pans in packs of four. I think I have eight or 12 of them myself. And I just topped it with some cheddar cheese. Then I covered it with the press and seal and put the lid on to pop into the freezer. Okay, the next recipe, I don't think I've ever done anything like this before, but I'm going to be making up some meatball sub sandwiches which they're going to be kind of ready to go in the freezer I put all of my ingredients right into the bowl I did a pound of beef a little bit of almond flour you could obviously use breadcrumbs or just regular flour an egg some dried onion and then I chopped up some fresh cilantro to put in here as well and often I like to get my girls involved in the kitchen somewhere and my oldest is learning a lot about correctly handling handling meat, washing your hands when you're done, those sorts of things. So I let her help me 
mix up this meatball mixture. So since I was going to be using some gluten-free buns for these subs, I knew they weren't gonna be really long subs and I figured about three nice size meatballs per sandwich. So we will get four good meatball subs out of this. So once I had the meatballs formed, I just dumped a good red sauce over the top of them and I shredded up some fresh mozzarella cheese and that is it. Next I just wrapped up the pan in the press and seal, put the lid on and I can also freeze the gluten free buns right along with the meatballs. This next recipe is one I have to rave about. I have to. It is so delicious. It's definitely going on my list of things to make again. Super, super yummy. It is a chicken bacon pesto stir fry and everyone in my household raved about this recipe. It is just so delicious. So you could make this with some good pasta or noodles if you wanted to, but I just gave a nice little healthy twist to it and made it with some cabbage. So I just cut the cabbage into strips so it'd be a little bit more like pasta. You want to fry about six to eight pieces of bacon in the bottom of your pan. And then I had probably around two to three pounds of chicken tenders that I cut into bite-sized pieces and fried right in the bacon grease. When the chicken was done, I added in my fried onion and just let that fry right in those juices from the chicken and the bacon. I think that's what makes this dish so good. It takes full advantage of every single ingredient and just brings so much savory flavor. Once your cabbage cooks down, um, you want to go ahead and chop up your bacon and throw your chicken pieces back in as well. And if your cabbage isn't cooking down very quickly, you can splash a little bit of water in there. That'll be just fine. And then you want about a half cup of pesto. And I just bought some pesto from the store. You could definitely make your own. And then I added about a half cup of fresh shredded Parmesan. And you're also going to want some for the topping as well. Once this is all mixed together, you can go ahead and put it into whatever you want to freeze it in or you can eat it right away. This day was a crazy busy day, so I wanted to make a really delicious dinner, and I went ahead and made a sheet pan meal. Also, this could be a freezer meal very easily. We just needed something for dinner this day, so this is what I whipped up. I thought I would show it to you just to give you a little bit of inspiration. So the first thing I did was take my Brussels sprouts and throw them into my salad spinner so that I could rinse them really well and then spin them dry. Once they were through the salad spinner, I put them into a separate bowl and I dumped some avocado oil over them, got them coated really well. It just helps them roast a little bit better. And then I took some beef smoked sausage that comes like this in kind of the horseshoe shape. I sliced that up and threw that right on the pan. That's such a great protein for sheet pan meals and it cooks up so well in the oven along with the roasted veggies. Then I sliced up a yellow or orange, whatever you would call it, bell pepper, and some onion as well. Then this is the real, real secret to this dish being so delicious. You wanna chop up some bacon and sprinkle it across your whole entire sheet pan. These Brussels sprouts soak up the bacon grease and cook up so well underneath of this bacon. It's unreal. It's really similar to bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts, where you wrap bacon around the Brussels sprouts. This is just kind of an easy shortcut. So while that was baking up, I decided to whip together a very, very easy freezer meal. You guys have seen me do this about every other month for the last 
I don't know how long, but I just cut up some chicken fajitas. But the main reason I actually wanted you all to see me doing this recipe was to show you this reusable Ziploc bag. I got a handful of these and some other sizes as well, and I've really been loving them. I feel like when you put things in the freezer in them, they really protect your food more so than regular Ziploc bags from getting freezer burned. So as usual, when I do my fajita mixture, I just do the chicken. I put some chili powder, some cumin powder. I think I put a little onion powder and some salt on it. And I like to do this method where I kind of just put all of the pieces of chicken out on the cutting board so everything gets coated evenly. And here is what the Brussels sprout sheet pan dinner looked like when it was done. And believe me, it tasted just as good as it looks. It was so yummy. Everybody was asking for seconds. It was just absolutely delicious. But here is everything that I prepped this day. I was so happy with my pile of food when I was done. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I hope this video inspired you. Leave me a comment that always helps me out and I'll see you all in my next video.